So we have to say on this week's podcast, we're really all wet, and for a good reason. We've talked time to time from extreme examples of when access to clean running water breaks down. We talked about it in Newark. We've all talked about it in Flint, Michigan. But also we have less extreme examples, but still indication that our water system could be in ultimate peril. And these are the water main breaks that we see around the city and around the tri-state that disrupt the service to water. So when we spotted that some of our city kids won an international competition or were recognized at least in this international competition that included 45,000 students from around the world to come up with a design for the future to make sure there's access to clean water, we said we have to talk to those students. One of them is here with me at 30 Rock, representing me. This is John Winston. Hello, John. Hello. Jesse Edwards, our producer, also went to the school in Harlem. The school is called the Columbia Secondary School for Math, Science, and Engineering. So we'll already kind of give you the benefit of the doubt that you guys are smart. But this still raises the bar, all right? Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, is that right, John? Yeah, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Okay, worked on this project in a competition that is called Future City. Now, this is really to foster interest and support those who want to study engineering and they draw on kids from all around the world all around the country and your team John was one that was recognized tell me about your project the name of the competition was clean water tap into tomorrow so tell me what you and your fellow team members did so the city won like the special award for best age-friendly city but the water purification system was also pretty good if I <laughs> I think if so. you have to say yes by, by all means yeah, so Future City is when a bunch of different students have to design um, a city that they feel like could exist in the future, and they have to solve basically all the problems that we encounter, but they have to focus on a certain problem. And this year the problem was um, how to s supply a city with clean water for all of its residents. So our city was called um, Aurora. It was placed in Switzerland. So we decided that the major threats to water systems in the future would be the pollution of water and also just a lack of water, especially because of climate change. It can cause water to evaporate more and then it would just fall back into the oceans and then it wouldn't be usable because it would be salt water. And so to combat that, we had underground reservoirs in our city so that it wouldn't evaporate. And also we had a three-step treatment process. The first step was um, drainage nets, which filtered the large plastic pollution out of the water. And then we had filters and chlorination, and we had um, aerobic biological treatment. All of the technology that we incorporated in the city design is actually already available, so it's really can just be built as soon as people are ready to build it. So we decided it was like the very near f future. It could be as early as like 2030. Well, it sounds simple enough to me. I mean, you know, <laughs> seriously. Tell me, take me back to the brainstorming stage. You work with a teacher, Phil Hubbard, professor. Tell me back to the brainstorming stage. The, the, the mandate was clean water tap into tomorrow. When you guys started thinking about it, is this something you've been studying? Is this something that kids of your age are really concerned about now, the future water supply? Take me to that early stage. So when we were coming up with the project and the city, we were thinking we had to do a lot of research about the water system. But then as we were researching it, we actually, our school got into a unit about water. So we were really lucky. We got to learn a kind lot of timed about, out. Okay. about um, New York's water system mm -hmm. and we actually after the competition but still the leading up to it we had a lot of interesting information we got to take a trip to um, the Catskills which is where a lot of New York City's water comes right. from right were you surprised by some of the things you learned were you and the teammates surprised uh, that and share with us for most of us know our water comes from the Catskills but there's probably a lot that we don't the average citizen doesn't know about water in New York City well something that we found interesting was that we think of like everyone has clean water, but we went up to a school in the Catskills and we turned on like the water and it was like really rusty and it was a rusted color from rusty pipes. Okay. And we also got to stay in a cabin where we weren't allowed to drink the water that came out of the tap because of something they had done to the system that they hadn't been able to fix yet. And so we had to drink uh, bottled water and it was kind of interesting. Wow. As I said, Jesse Edwards, our producer, went up to the classroom as well, so we have an opportunity to hear from some of them. 13-year-old Avery Widener was in charge of building a city simulation in SimCity, and he told Jesse how amazed the teenagers were when they heard that they'd won the regional finals. Let's listen. So how did that feel when you found out that, that you had won this? 
I'll give you the real breakdown of how I felt. I was really sad because we were, we didn't think we were going to win first, but we hadn't won a single award up until then, and I was thinking with my head all the way down, wow, we're not going to win a single thing, and we worked so hard on this. And then first place got announced, our city name, Aurora, and me and the other two over there just shot up screaming. <laughs> we were so surprised. Do you have any advice for, for city planners, politicians, future builders? Yes. If you're going to do something like this, you, can't, you have to put a lot of effort into it. You really have to invest your time. That's what I really learned along the way, like with the SimCity and everything. Because if you don't invest a lot of your time, you're going you're gonna to think, oh, I don't need to do this. I don't, have, I don't need to try that hard, but you're going to end up with a failed city. You really need to invest your time in this. Another student, Jason Fan, told us how they built the innovative water system. So basically, we had used drainage nets, and this blocked off large pieces of trash like paper and plastic in our water. And then after that, we, used, we chlorinated the water, which eliminated most of the waste, not all of it. And but like then we filter the water right after chlorinating it because Chlor excessive amounts of chlorine has the ability to harm citizens. And then we used aerobic biological treatment. And this process, we basically mixed our water with bacteria and then pumped the uh, bacteria with oxygen. And that stimulated their metabolic processes, which cleaned the rest of the water. Is this system in place anywhere else in the world at this point? Or is this something that you have actually created new? I think this would be a new, unique system because modern cities usually combine um, aerobic biological treatment and anaerobic biological treatment, but we replaced um, anaerobic with the first three steps because anaerobic sometimes takes up to three months to actually filter or clean the water. So we wanted our water system to be more efficient. So now you get to working on it. Tell me, how, what are they, how did you have to break this process up? I know you identified three aspects to the system, but tell me how you guys tackle this. So when it came down to actually building the city, first we came up with a rough city plan and we sort of drew it out on graph paper. And then as we started um, reviewing it, we made any edits we wanted to make to it. And then we actually started building the board. Mm -hmm. And I have to say a lot changed. We were originally going to have the river in the center of the city. And then as we decided to have more clear zoning, we decided to have it farther from the industrial area in case there was some sort of accident that could occur and we didn't want it to be polluted. Gotcha, gotcha. So there was a lot of uh, give and take, stop and start, revisit this, kind of retool that through the process. Yeah, I mean, it, they, what we ended up with was pretty reminiscent of what we had in okay. our minds, but a few of the details that we weren't entirely set on got switched around plenty of times. Yeah, Jason also explained to us one of the biggest threats to clean water in New York City. Listen to this. One of the risks right now to clean water in New York City is like people's habits. Like we often just, um, we don't really think that much about trash and we just dump it in, on the streets and we don't clean up after the dogs. And I guess that always ends up in the water and that's not a good thing. So I'm kind of worried. Um, not only that, but nutrient pollution is also a big problem because like excessive amounts of phosphorus is getting into the water and that's not really good for humans. So now tell me about the competition. It was in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, so in Washington, D.C., we had, first we were in this large room with all the other different cities and their boards and we had to give presentations to judges that were walking around and these were the judges for the special awards and they would point at different parts of our board and ask them about how they related to the specific topic that they were judging for and also just ask for general information or ask for a presentation. And then the next day we went to a room where we were the only group in the room and then we had to do a presentation to like a panel of uh, judges and they went and asked some questions about the board. What was that like? Tell me, tell me, tell me how, you, how you and the other students felt. How was it, was it nerve wracking? Was it scary? I mean, well, we actually got to go uh, twice with two different sets of judges. The mm -hmm. first time was a lot more nerve wracking it than was. the second time. By the second time, we felt a little more calm, but I don't think, I think we really did about just as good both times. Okay. Well, clearly, because you, know, you got recognition. Definitely. Yeah. So now, do you come away with some concerns about the, the world's, the globe's future water supply? I mean, not really, because when we went there, we saw these amazing groups with these 
incredible systems designed for changing all these different threats to the water system. Uh -huh. And if anything, it made me feel like, okay, if, as long as these people get into <laughs> positions where they can do something, then we're completely fine. Well, I would include you and your teammates in that group, by the way, John. Thank you. I mean, we're counting on you. Well, you can imagine how fulfilling this is for the students, Professor Phil Hubbard. And uh, he told Jesse that his students give him hope for the future. Phil, as I was saying before, you're one of those, I can tell that you're one of those teachers that just goes above and beyond, and you've obviously been intimately involved in this project. Um, so tell me, what has the experience been like for you from ideation to actually coming home with an award? I'm really happy for the kids and for the school, and, um, and the kids just really put in a lot of work and effort, and, um, and it's not easy for them and and so on the day when they win something uh they're just so happy and I, I have a certain debrief that I do for all of them and then I say so tell me now that it's over and you've either won something you haven't won something or whatever um was it worth it and the resounding yeah just makes it all worthwhile because I'm a you know an old guy and I've come from another generation and I see the world the way I guess I see it. Um, and, and sometimes I have concerns because I don't really understand how kids think nowadays and all the newfangled stuff. Um, but, uh, but anyway, then a group of kids like Aurora come along and they just blow me away. John, congratulations to you and the team and to Phil Hubbard and to Future City for kind of bringing out the best in our young people. Thank you. All right, come back and visit us, will you? Okay. I have some other salute. Do uh, you have something for baldness? Seriously. Okay. <laughs>